Hello everyone, welcome back to Coach Tom. In this video, you will learn Describe validations Why do we need validations? Describe different types of validations Explain how validation works Explain how to handle validations using exception handler Validations in Spring Boot are used to ensure that data received from users or other sources follows to predefined rules and expectations. This helps maintain data integrity, prevent errors, and improve overall application behavior. Validations offer several crucial benefits. One is data integrity, which guarantees that data complies to necessary data types, formats, and ranges, which helps in minimizing inconsistencies and unexpected behaviors. Second one is error prevention. By catching invalid data early on, validations can prevent runtime exceptions and unexpected errors, which improves application stability. Third one is user experience. By using validations in Spring Boot, it provides clear feedback to users when their input is invalid, helping them to correct mistakes and avoid frustrations. Fourth is security. Validations can be used to prevent malicious input or security vulnerabilities like SQL injection. At not null, in this check, value must not be null. It accepts any data type. At not empty, here value must not be null or empty. This is not ideal for a string as it won't validate white spaces, but it is ideal for collections or maps. Not blank, value must not be null and must contain at least one white space characters. This is ideal for string because when we pass uh, empty spaces or white spaces, this will consider it as invalid as it trims the value and then checks whether the value is blank, empty or not. At size, value should range between the specified minimum and maximum value. At min, value cannot be lesser than specified minimum. If we give the minimum value as 18 in the, and from the request body, if we send it as 17, this condition will fail. At maximum, Value cannot be more than specified maximum. It is similar to minimum. At positive annotation, here value must be positive. If we pass zero from the request body, then it is considered as invalid value. Similarly, for at negative, value must be negative. At positive or zero annotation, here value must be positive or zero. Here we can pass zero and it is considered as a valid value. And next is negative or zero annotation. And this one is at past where value must be passed. So at past annotation supports date, calendar, instant, local date, local date, time, and many more. Future, the value must be in the future. Past or present, value must be past or present. At future or present, the date which we provide must be future or present. Pattern, the value which we pass must match the specified regular expressions. By using at email annotation, value must be well formed email address. Digits. Here, value must be number within accepted range. We'll show the example. At null, value must always be null when we use this annotation. Let's say there is a string, and if I use annotation at null, that string should always be null from the request body. At decimal mean, here, value must be a number which will be a year or equal to specified minimum. So if I give the decimal mean as 0.5, it should be equal or greater than that 0.5. Decimal max, value must be a number which will be lower or equal to specified maximum. If I give decimal max value as 1.0, it should be equal to 1.0 or lesser than that. Assert true, so this will be used for a boolean value. Here, value must always be set to true. Assert false, again, this will be used for a boolean value and value must be always false. As we know what are the different types of validation annotations and what does it do. Now let's jump into the code. To start with, let's add this Spring Boot Starter Validation. Then I've created a student DTO which contains all these values. I've used record. In your case, you can use classes as well, which will be having getters and setters. This is a DTO and you can use the similar way in Do layer like this, not blank, size, minimum, maximum, etc. And these are the entity for our toe layer. 
So now let's go back to our DTO. Here as you see, I'm setting not null for this ID. Just consider this for example, where for a long, I'm setting this at not null. This is not blank. A name must not be null and it should contain at least one non-space character. Size minimum is five, maximum is 50 for the given name. Not empty. The subject list must not be empty or null. So minimum and maximum. The minimum value is 18 and the maximum value is 100. You can use minimum and maximum for any other examples also. But in this case, I've used age at email. This will check the email format at past. The date should be past. Future. The date should be future, not blank. Year. The roll number must not be null or blank. It should contain the value in this pattern. That is this regular expression. Let's test this regular expression now. Alt and enter and click this. Check regular expression. If I pass reg01, this will be valid. If I pass the value lesser than 2, that is, if I pass reg0, it will be false. The value here should start from reg and should contain at least 2 digits and maximum of 10 digits. Hope this is clear. It is a digits and I've used two annotations here. One is the value must be positive and the second one is digits. Just for the example case, I've set the integer here as 5 and fraction as 2, which means these must be a number with at most 5 integer digits and 2 decimal digits. I will show the example in our JSON. And the final one is discount percentage on the fees. Decimal max is minus 1.5. Decimal min is minus 5.0. So the discount would range from minus 1.5% to minus 5.0. If I give minus 5.1, it will fail. And if I give minus 1, instead of minus 1.5 it will fail as well and it should be a negative value if we give a positive value it will fail these are the most commonly used annotations in spring boot validations now let's go to our controller class along with our student dto request body we also need to pass at valid annotation here if you think why do we need this valid annotation to ensure that all the checks which we have done here will not be ignored we need to make sure that we need to use this at valid annotation in our controller layer beside our request body. So if all the validations are successful, then it will return the same student DTO class. Now not created any service class or a database layer as this is just simple example. But only if all the validations are successful, then only we will get the response. Now let's see a custom exception handler. So let's say a particular check fails for the variable name. I pass only three letters. We need to make sure that we get this message, right? How to do that? So we can achieve that by using a custom exception handler. This is a REST controller advice. Make sure to add this annotation. And this should be extended with response entity exception handler. This is the built-in method which comes under this class, response entity exception handler. Let's copy this and go inside this class and check this method. If you see, this is the built-in method, but we are changing the behavior of this built-in method. If you want to learn more about exception handler, please watch my another video where I have explained in detail. I will share the link in description or add an info card at the top. So as I said, this is the built-in method. Here, method argument not a valid exception is the exception which handles the exceptions which will be thrown from our validations. So here, the exception will give us a binding result which contains the field errors. Here the field errors is a list and then we map it into a get default message. Here get default message is nothing but the messages which we give here. If you want the variable name along with the message, we can also do that by using e.getField and e.getDefault message. But in this case, I will be showing only get default message. But if you want the field name also, they should work. So in this case, we will get only message not the field so finally i am return i am using string dot join with a delimiter so if you have a multiple errors so all the errors will be with this delimiter and it will throw it as a bad request which is 400 now let's run this application Okay, the application has started. 
I'm using IntelliJ Ultimate so I can perform this HTTP request inside the IntelliJ itself but in your case you can use Postman or any other application first let's run the positive scenario if you notice we get the exact DTO which means all the validations are true now let's say if I pass empty value for Lewis with a space and null for ID this will give us two checks where ID must not be null because in our student class we have used at not null and name should not be null or empty and minimum letters are 5 and maximum are 50 so here even though we have entered a blank space or a white space character yeah as we have used not blank this will check null and at least one non white space character should be present but in our request body that's not the case that's why it has failed similarly let's check other scenarios i will undo this let's let's check for the email now and the age and the list as well i pass the empty list and the value minimum value which i have set is 18 so i will enter it as 15 and i will remove gmail over here so we should get three errors here as expected we get three errors one is subject list must not be empty invalid email id because i have not entered gmail here and minimum age is 18 because i have set the value as 15 which is lesser than the expected let's undo this so here admission date should be passed this is just for example your next last promoted date is the future date Roll number I've showed earlier that it should match the expected regular expression. I would like to explain this tuition fees here because I've used digits in our student. So let's say if I pass more than five values and more than two fractions, let's see what will be the error. First, I will use more than five values. Let's say we have six digits. Post it. We get this value must be a number with at most five integer digits and two decimal digits. Now let's make it to five digits and pass the decimal as three digits. They should also fail with the same message. Hope this is clear now. So here the value must be five digits and the fraction must be two because we have specified the same number over here. This is validations in Spring Boot. Thank you for watching.